Welcome back, movie lovers. Today, we're taking a deep dive into the intense and gripping world of the 2015 film, Colonia. Join us as we recap the harrowing journey of a young couple caught in the midst of political turmoil and a secretive cult in 1970s Chile. Get ready for a roller coaster of suspense, love, and survival in this captivating recap of Colonia. Before that, did you know that 99.2% of you haven't subscribed to my channel yet? Join the exclusive 0.8% by hitting that subscribe button now and never miss out on our awesome content. The film kicks off with Lena aboard a plane, about to touch down in Chile. After landing, the whole crew hops into a van to head into town. However, their journey grinds to a halt due to street blockage caused by a throng of enraged protesters. They're bellowing about skyrocketing prices and shortages. Amid this chaos, Lena spots her long-distance flame, Daniel, and jumps out of the van. The couple reunites, making up for lost time. When they reach Daniel's apartment, Lena takes a good look around, noticing photos and posters scattered everywhere. Daniel explains that his new hobby keeps him occupied, and that's why he's in Chile. Later that day, Daniel takes Lena to an assembly where he delivers a fiery speech. He passionately declares Chile his home and condemns the suffering endured by the less fortunate. The crowd roars in approval. The following morning, Daniel gets a phone call, learning about a military coup led by General Pinochet. Meanwhile, supporters of President Allende are being rounded up, and Daniel's posters are confiscated. Sensing danger, Daniel grabs his camera, and as they hit the streets, they witness the military forcing people into lines. Daniel covertly starts snapping pictures, and even Lena feels the tension, knowing it's a perilous situation. Shortly after a gunshot rang out on the street, chaos erupted, and folks started legging it in pure panic. The army hot on their heels, giving them a good old chase. Daniel, the guy with the camera, he ain't one to miss a shot. He edges closer for some more snaps, but ends up on the military's radar. They don't take kindly to folks documenting their heavy-handed moves. Next thing you know, they've bundled Daniel and some gal off to a stadium. Suddenly, a chopper swoops in. Out pops this bloke with a bag over his noggin, escorted by the top brass. This bagged-up fella's got a job. Pick out Allende supporters from the mob. Well, it don't take long for this guy to spot Daniel. He tips off the general that Daniel's the one behind them posters. They whisk him off in a hurry. Meanwhile, Lena's left bewildered in the stadium. When she finally makes it back home, her place is trashed. Poor Lass is feeling low as a worm's belly. She's dead set on finding her bloke and heads over to the other Allende supporters, hoping for some answers. They reckon Daniel's likely ended up in this joint called the Colony of Dignity. Lena asks for their help to bust him out, but no dice for now. The military's hot on their trail and the plans to keep their heads down. Meanwhile, Daniel's waking up tied to a metal bed in some godforsaken place. They're grilling him hard. He's telling them he's just a German, ain't got nothing to do with it, but they reckon he's the poster guy and ain't buying his story. Then this pious character shows up, pretending to be a good egg, saying he's gonna look after Daniel. Lena, on the other hand, is fuming. Amnesty International's turned a blind eye, reckoning this colony of dignity is legit and government approved. A guy cranks up the volume, then drops a bombshell on Lena. Turns out, her bloke's knee-deep in some cult led by Pius. They warn her, go rescue her fella, and she might never get out herself. Lena, dressed to the nines, heads to the Colony of Dignity all on her lonesome. Gisela, the welcoming committee, asks if she's up for joining. Lena, pretending to be a god-seeker, says, sure, why not? She reckons she's following the big man upstairs. Meanwhile, in a different corner, a doc's checking out Daniel. Everyone can see the doc's gobsmacked and terrified by Daniel's condition. The doc tells Pius that the torture might have scrambled Daniel's brain. Daniel sees his chance and starts acting like he's got the IQ of a brick. They fall for it, thinking he's as sharp as a spoon. They march Daniel, now calling himself Hans, off to see a blacksmith for a once-over. The blacksmith buys the whole brain-fried story and gives him nonsense chores. When the blacksmith buggers off, Daniel starts nosing around and stumbles on a room with cameras. The blacksmith catches him red-handed, but Daniel fakes needing a wee. Back to Lena, she's now officially in the cult and meets the other drudges. Gisela Jets, and Dora, one of the worker bees, reaches out. She asks if Lena's from the outside, and Lena spills the beans. Next day, Lena blabs Dora's secret to Gisela, which lands Dora in hot water. That night, Gisela grabs Dora and drags her off to some big cult shindig, 
and Lena, being the sneak she is, follows them when Gisela forgets to lock the door. She sneaks a peek through the window. Lena spies Dora, looking scared, while some young lads sing softly nearby. Pius signals the boys to hush and smell the foul air. He reckons the room stinks because the devil's in Doro Deiter, her secret lover. Pius asks what Dieter thinks of the foul, stinking mess. Their eyes meet, and Dieter, hesitant, mumbles an answer. Pius suggests exercising the demon by giving Doro a beating, and Dieter reluctantly agrees. Outside, Lena peeks and spots Daniel in the crowd. The other lads notice her snooping. Lena dashes back to the dorm. Pius doesn't see Lena, so he starts thrashing Gisela for not locking up. Next morning, Lena asks Urzel about Dora. Urzel assures her Dora will pull through. Lena remembers Daniel and asks Urzel how to get to the men's gathering like Doro did. Later, Lena strips down and dives in the water. Her plan works, and they take her to the men's gathering, claiming the water's gone foul due to her antics. This time, though, Daniel is nowhere to be seen. When men threatened to harm her, an unexpected alarm halted their aggression. They assumed Daniel, due to his perceived mental limitations, had accidentally triggered it. Unbeknownst to them, Daniel desperately sought escape that night, scaling a barbed fence and receiving a shock. Months later, Lena and Daniel reunited in the midst of a parade. Their conversation unveiled the colony's dark purpose, hidden by a government turning a blind eye in exchange for weapons from Pius, who was also considering purchasing poison gas. Pius, deeming Daniel expendable, suggested testing the gas on him. Amidst their reunion, Daniel regretfully admitted to Lena that he had unwittingly led her into this nightmare. She countered, revealing her motive for joining was to find him. The next morning, Pius summoned Lena, warning her to keep an eye on Urzel, who he saw as a clever but untrustworthy woman. Urzel's told to watch Lena, who's been venting about this dump and wanting out, mostly because she's got a bun in the oven. The trio's scheming to bolt tonight since they're going to test poison on poor Daniel tomorrow. He spills the beans about a secret tunnel and what he thinks is the way out. Their chit-chat gets busted by Gisela's tractor roar. Quick as a fox, Dan ducks into the tunnel, but oops, he drops a snap. Lena tries to stash it, but Gisela sniffs it out and tips off Pius with his hounds of hell. Pius grills Lena about the pick, but she's singing dumb. Then in walks Dan, saying he found it first. He leads Pius to the smithy where all the picks are stashed. Pius thinks the smithy's a rat and lets the lovebirds fly. Gisela's guiding Lena back when she spots Dan. Lena smacks Gisela and sprints back to Urzel. The three lads make a slick getaway from those dodgy tunnels. But old mate Urzel, poor bugger, he goes and tumbles right into a nasty trap, carks it on the spot. The other two carry on with their daring escape and manage to rock up at the German embassy, where they spill the beans. Bit later, they cop a squiz at Pius having a chinwag with the embassy crew, and it dawns on them that they've walked straight into a trap. Quick as a flash, they leg it through the window. When Pius gets wind of it, he sends the heavies after him and tries to get the pilot to scuttle their flight. But the pilot has a Captain Cook and decides to take off anyway. They finally give Chile the flick. The movie wraps up with Daniel's plan to blow the lid off the colony, not going off without a hitch. It goes public, stirs up a real hornet's nest with debates and protests, but the Chilean government doesn't lift a finger. They keep on trucking for a few more years until Pinochet's out of the picture, and Chile finally becomes a fair dinkum democratic country. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. Take care.